I've been working on these kit bashes for a little while now. Time to decide on a paint scheme. Welcome back to the Lizard of Doom. I am Max. Now, these kit bashes have been going on for a little while. My Tau army is building slowly. I'm having a game with them the day before Christmas Eve, so they all need to be done for then. I need to decide on a paint scheme for my troops. I've painted up some Gundam to be my Riptides in previous videos, like this. So the troops need to kind of match that paint scheme. So I'm gonna play around with those paints and see how I feel. The one I'll be painting today, as you've probably guessed because you've clicked the thumbnail or seen the title, is the Cadre Fireblade. You may think it's foolish to be painting the HQ of my army first, because that's the one you wanna get right, but it all depends how you work personally. And for me, it is gonna be best to do the most important one first, because I know I'm horrendous at batch painting and I really hate it. So the first one I do is going to be better than all of the other ones. So it makes a lot of sense to start with this one. Before we get into it, tick on my like button, hee hee hee, and subscribe. Thank you very much. These are the yellow paints I used on the main armor of the Riptides. These are the Army Painter Triad for these kind of yellows, and they evoke a kind of yellowy, beigey color like the old Tau colors before they all went white on the GW web store. I like the way they used to look, so I zenithal them up on a couple of test models before I did my HQ, just to test something else afterwards. And while I had the airbrush out, I might as well make a full cup and paint all of them with these kind of yellows just so I've got them ready for batch painting when I tackle them. It saves a lot of time to do that now. The colours I'm testing are the clothes colours. I used a brown contrast on this one to see what it would look like if the clothes were brown, and then I used a black on the other one to see what it would look like if they were black, because I did panels in brown on the towel riptides, and then I did under kind of more technical bits in black. I think the black looks better for the uniform, so I painted that up on my fire blade. And I was able to do the more technical bits as well with black. Anything that looks functional is going to be black on these models. And the armour is going to be kind of the main colours. Talking of the brown, I went back in with the Mornfang brown and picked out loads of different panels just to make it look like there was variance in the armour. If a panel met a panel, one of them would probably be brown. I went more for the under panels being brown, like the yellow ones are kind of the army colours on top of these. I did a bit of edge highlighting, moving up through Scrag Brown and Deathclaw Brown because these models don't have the colours baked in like the yellows do. They have the Zenithal from the airbrush, so I needed something to kind of give these a little bit more variance, and so they weren't just flat one colour. Quite a chunky highlight with the Scrag Brown and then little dots in the corners and high edges with the Deathclaw Brown afterwards, just to give them that little raised feel. Now I was going to try a neat trick I'd seen before on this Tau shoulder marking. This has the Tau symbol kind of carved into it and sculpted into it. So I'm going to try a little trick to paint that easily. Put some water over the entire area and make sure it goes in the crevices that you want painted. And then I'm going to do that on these little gun bits as well because they've got little lines and stuff. So anything that's got a divot that's on a black circle is going to get this treatment. Because I'm not painting any metallics on these, I'm keeping them metallic free. Then once that's mostly dry, you need some very watered down white and then touch it to the areas because the crevices should remain quite wet and the capillary action will pull your paint into them. This worked reasonably well. I did do this twice and then tidied up with black afterwards. And I think it's better than if I tried to freehand it. Letting it flow into these recesses is definitely the way to do this kind of work. Go, a little tidy up with black just to make sure that I have got this perfect and then it is done. Look, one towel symbol, easily painted, quickly, no messing about. That's a nice little trick and then it can be used for kind of glow effects in crevices and cracks as well on stuff like Necrons and Terminator Librarians. They've got some nice crevices on their armour that you can put some white in like this and then add other colours for glow as well. The chest piece needed a towel transfer I thought. So I cut this one out because I quite liked it, don't know what it means, I just thought it looked cool. And then using my wet palette, this is another vital use for a wet palette, left it to soak until I could lift the transfer off without any hassle. Wet palette for the win. 
I did have a problem when it came to placing it. Yeah, the area it's going on is a little bit too small. I couldn't eyeball that with the transfers on the sheets. Uh, they looked about the right size, but this was a little bit disappointing. Now this transfer just did not sit right. There's like a clear bit around the edge of all GW transfers and that extended kind of off the chest plate. It's hard to see in the video footage, but it did and it was really annoying. I didn't know what to do about that for now, so I just left it and moved on until a brainwave hit me. It didn't take long for a brainwave to hit me. I just managed to finish edge highlighting with storm vermin fur on all the kind of hard bits that would be black because I was going to do the cloth with a different edge highlight to vary the blacks. And then I thought I would try a different towel transfer on the chest. I wondered if these ones on a different part of the sheet were smaller, but no, they were the same size. So I had a look at some human transfers and settled on this skull and crossbones from the Krieg transfer set. This was a nice little human symbol in amongst all this towel regalia. I thought that the Amican First Loyalists may want the human skull on their chest because they themselves are human. It kind of makes sense if you think about it that they would have some kind of human marking that's different from the towel. I think I'm going to do skull and crossbones for HQs and just skulls for the troops. Now I was happy with my transfers, I could start on weathering, so I sponged on some Rhinox Hide, the best paint for doing little bits of chips and stuff in armours. If you go a little bit too heavy though, you can dampen your brush and pull it back before it dries. Just take those bits off and then you've got it just along the raised edges so it looks like nice wear and tear. I do like a quite heavily chipped armour, I do find that looks appealing to me, so I smashed it all over the rest of her armour and now she looks like she's been through battle many times. This is perfect for my tough HQ, who is named Sophie Thorpe after one of my Patreon's daughters. Now for the black cloth I edge highlighted with Thunderhawk Blue. I wanted it to be mainly a dark black and I knew I was going to do some weathering effects over it at the end which would hopefully add a bit of depth to it. So I didn't bother going balls to the wall with highlights here because I don't think it's going to be important. I then painted the leather strap in Rhinox Hide. I hadn't done any leather on previous models in this army because they've all been mechs and tanks so this was going to be interesting. I then did the patented Lizard of Doom scratchy leather technique with Doomball Brown and Tuscor fur along the edges after that. I thought I would start with Rhinox Hide here because it matches the colour of the chipping. And even though you might not be able to tell that after it's all highlighted, it reads better across the model if some colours are similar in different areas. You don't have to switch up like your browns across an entire model. A lot of the time you can get away with just using the same browns and because the chips weren't highlighted, they look very different to how the leather looks in the end. This model had a lot more leather straps than I thought, not just the one I'd put on the front to keep the gun on the shoulder, but loads down the back of the legs holding on these pads. It is a GW model after all, leather straps all over. This little TV screen on the wrist, I wanted it to look like there were some kind of orders coming through on this, so I had to think about how I was going to do that and baste it with white to start with. And while I had the white out on the palette, I decided to try something new. I like experimenting on this channel and I was going to try a new way of making a kind of glowing hot effect. This is a fire blade after all, so I was going to give him a fiery weapon. I know it's not a blade, it's some kind of electro mace thing, but go with me. I massively thinned down this white till it kind of worked as a little bit of a contrast paint, pooling in the recesses and gliding off the raised surfaces. Come to think of it, I could have done this with contrast medium and it may have worked better, but this was good enough for what I was going to do. I wanted it to be brighter in the recesses, much as plasma effect is. And this is what I got after doing that with very thin white. While I was doing that, the TV screen had dried, so I put a black line around the edge of it just to define it a little bit and went over the top with some athermatic blue contrast paint. And this would be done. I'd, I'd call that done after that because I let it pull in the middle and it left a little nice bubble like a TV screen. Then I went in with some Magma Drop Flame contrast paint all over this white area on the weapon. This was a little bit too thick, so I only used a little bit and then spread it out over the entire area. This would be the start of going back and forth to make my glowing effect. Then the Athematic Blue had dried, so I kind of squiggled in some orders on this that she would read and then move forward on the battlefield. Just some lines, dots, and little squigglies going across. 
back to this when it had dried with some art coat just to make it a shiny TV screen. And then when I did the weathering effects later on, they would slide off this and it would still look nice, clean and shiny. Some more thin down white, more aiming at the cracks this time rather than an all over coat, but not worrying too much if it got on the raised bits, getting them off with my fingers when it did, and just covering all these little areas to make more of the glow effect now. When that was done, it looked like this. And the next step would be some Imperial Fist contrast paints on those white areas. Not really caring if I hit the raised orange bits as well, it might add to the blending is what I thought. Then back to the thinned white down the middle and cracks in this weapon. Building up more of a white area until I ended up using pure white just for the middle. This was done while the yellow contrast paint was still wet. A little bit of wet blending with this white and then when it was dry I then went in with the extra pure white in the middle. This glow was coming together but I wasn't quite happy with it yet. So I highlighted the middle with black on these raised areas on the weapon to make it look like these weren't quite as hot as the middle of the weapon was. Then back to the Magma Drop Flame Orange for the edges of these weapon areas and the tip and base of the weapons to make it look like it was cooling down towards these areas and the heat was emanating from the energy source in the middle. This was an entire experiment, I had no idea how this was going to go and I thought that the result was pretty nice. Not bad for a little hot glow on a weapon, would be useful for lava as well so maybe use this for that. If you use it let me know how it goes and put it in the discord link below. I think that was a very successful experiment, I'd never painted a glow like that before. Have a little go yourselves, let me know what you think, let me know in the comments if you think that was good. Now on to the head, it's been sat this whole time with nothing going on. This head was from one of the newer Cities of Sigmar boxes and on that box they're painted in black skin tones and I really liked how that looked with this sculpt so that is what I'm going to do. Games Workshop do have a lovely nice black skin tone range now. They used to only have white skin tones but this starts with Katachan Flesh and this is a lovely base for this. You can then use a shade over it, I didn't, I didn't want to take it that deep in the recesses so I went on to highlighting with Blood Reaver Flesh. One thing to note on this model, I did want her to look slightly older so I put emphasis on the kind of jowl areas and lines on the foreheads to make her look slightly advanced in years and like she had some experience behind her. The final highlight on these will be Night Quest or Flesh and then you've kind of completed the GW Black Skin range and it is very, very nice. I think I successfully made her look older by enforcing the lines around her mouth area and her cheekbones and made her look a bit jowly. That is definitely intentional and I moved on to the hair. Using the same highlight I used for the black hard bits in Storm Vermin Fur. And then the next highlight would be Karak Stone. This is kind of like a yellowy brown. I didn't want it to look too white because I think that might be too off-putting next to the white transfer and logos. I want it to look more natural than those and I think I achieved that here. By highlighting in thick lines I either made it look like braids or dreads maybe rather than a loose all over highlight which makes it look like a solid mass of hair. This was intentional. I wanted it to look like a hairstyle that this lady would have. I imagine her having braids because that would be more suitable to have her hair tied up tight for these kind of combat situations, it would not get in the way then at all. I also put a little bit of Bugman's Glow just in her mouth to make it look fleshy in there. Then I moved on to the eyes. I used a bit of Duncan's White Star to create the rough eyeball shape. I could not get it right the first time. Sometimes it's perfect first time, other times you have to work at it for ages. So I went back in with the darker skin tone to refill out those kind of eye sockets and make it more a shape I was happy with. And unfortunately I messed that up too and had to use a damp brush and take a bit off. Then I went back to the white to try and fix that again and then I went to the pupils and then I went back to the white then back to the skin tone and sometimes it just does not go your way doing eyes. Usually I can get it quite nice but I've been out of practice painting small miniatures for a little while now. I've been painting big things. The smallest thing I've painted recently is an Iron Jaws Orc which is quite large. I went back and forth for ages trying to get that little eye right until I just abandoned it. Sometimes it's best just to move on. I sat there for 10 minutes trying to do that getting incredibly frustrated and it's not worth it. I got it okay and thought it was good enough. Good enough for me at least and that's all that matters, it's my model. The only things left to do now are the grey streaking grime like I've done on all the other towel stuff I've painted for this army 
playlists up there now and will be linked down below if you do want to see that. But come back and watch the rest of this after that or watch the rest of this and then go there. Okay? I've thrown myself now. So the grey streaking grime and the basing, that is all I've got left to do. So why not have a little bit of lizard law while we do that? Lizard law based on a game that I had recently against some Necrons. Here's the lore from that game. It was my first time on the battlefield and I'm glad my commander was Fireblade Thorpe. She commanded like no one I've ever seen before. She took three shots from this Necron that had many arms and was wielding a gun in every hand. He managed to target her in the middle of our unit, but she stood tall. I don't know how she managed to remain on her feet, but she did. She took the damage and stood. We all stood that day. The Necrons would not win. We took control of objectives quickly and then destroyed the Necrons home base. I've never seen a Riptide blast forward over a building and gun down a giant walker before. That was something to see indeed. Afterwards, the pilot got a bit of a bollocking. The Tau said you're not meant to fire and fade forwards, but the human aggression in us doesn't let us retreat so easy. The Tau are happy to sit back and just take them out long range. But we're a meek and first loyalists. We are aggressive. It paid off. The Tau weren't happy, but it worked. I think I've talked to the pilot and he's going to do that again the next battle we have. And I don't think that's going to take too long. The next time we might not be so lucky. But for now we fight on across the stars for the greater good. And so here we have it. Shablam. She is right here. Not in real life, but when you're watching us, she'll be right here. I'm happy with how this is done. And the rest of my stuff... It's gonna take a little bit of time if I paint it like this. It took me a whole day to paint her how she is now, and I can't afford to do that on 15 more models and have them done in time. So I'm gonna have to think of how I can speed this paint job up, so come back in the future to see how I do that. And why not subscribe so you don't miss that? Mm -hmm, look at me, a professional YouTuber. You can see the names of my lovely Patreons over there. Maybe you would like to support the channel too and help me do the nonsense that I do on this channel. It's not cheap. The link is up there now, shablam, and also down in the description. I also have a Discord. There's loads of friendly people in there always chatting about game rules, painting, random memes. So join that as well. It's lots of fun in there and they're very nice people. Thank you all for watching. Comment algorithm for the algorithm god. Leave a like for the like throne. Remember, it's not a pile of shame, it's a pile of future fun. See you next time, kids.